today is Wednesday already. It's May 14th, and we're moving right along here. Hello to you. We're almost the middle of the month of May. Can you believe that? This is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. Oh, yeah. What a great day. Uh, it's just it's just a great time of year. I love this yes, time it is. of year. Oh, my gosh. It's gorgeous. All right. <laughs> it's gorgeous. And on today's show. Who's on today's show? Thank you for asking, Wayne. Wayne. You actually spoke with a gentleman about a program for retirees from Seymour Johnson. Can you tell me what his oh, name is? His name is Mick O'Donnell. He's a retired major from the Air Force here. And Mick is very active in community things, things and community issues. And I mentioned this yesterday, I believe it was, that uh, mm -hmm. we'll be talking to Mick. And Mick has a program called Retirees on Call, ROC, ROC, they're calling it. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a program that's been put together to help people on base. It was initially started to help uh, re uh, people who are in need of assistance or help in any regard. Uh, when their spouse is family, deployed? When their spouse deploys, yeah, exactly. Uh, and they're away from home and they need help, then you can call ROC. There that's you go. excellent. Anyway, He'll tell us more about hear it. more about it, yeah. We also had Letitia Banks on. She's going to be on today's show talking about the Arts Council and all the different things they have going on this summer. Now, she's passionate. Yes, she is. She loves what she does. And you can certainly tell. She's an artist herself. She's a singer. She has a great voice. Well, I knew she had to be a singer. She does have a great voice. Yeah. Wait, wait till uh, you hear and see her. She is just... That's all on today's bubbly. show. She is effervescent. Yes, she, she is. is. She's a really nice person. Okay, May 14th. The year was 16, uh, 1607. Okay. I remember it well. Oh, uh, yeah. 1607, three very small ships. One was the Susan Constant. Okay. The other was Godspeed. And the third ship was Discovery. They sailed across the ocean blue in 1607 from Plymouth, England. Mm -hmm. They took a Plymouth from England. And, um, they took a Plymouth. And, they, <laughs> um, and, and uh, the ship's crew and passenger to a place called Jamestown, Virginia. Yes. And the rest is history. Well, it was all history because it <laughs> has happened already. <laughs> anyway, yes, back has. 1607, I said that. Weren't you listening? <laughs> anyway, it's uh, Jamestown was uh, discovered or settled or did something on this day, 1607. Thank you for that. <sighs> sure. Oh, and birthdays today. George Lucas is having a birthday today. How old is he? He is 70. Wow. Happy 70 birthday. Today. George Lucas, of course, director and did a little acting. Uh, the Indiana Jones mm -hmm. series. He directed the Star Wars series. He also did American Graffiti. Uh, Fabrice Mor uh, Morvan is having a birthday. Morvan is having a birthday. You remember him as the duo, half of the duo of the Millie Vanilli. I knew that's what you were going to say. Yeah, yeah. Marie, uh, Fabrice uh, was one of the two. Very sad story it there. It was. I mean, they really got they in got lots hammered. and lots of trouble. They got in lots of trouble. They got in trouble because of their promoter. Exactly. Their promoter's the guy that did this. All they were mm. doing is they were just following orders, and they should have known, but they didn't. They were young, and they were seeing all this money there. Yep. They uh, were lip syncing, and the fans thought they were actually singing, and it was actually somebody else who was doing the, the recording. Yes, it was. It wasn't them at all. They couldn't sing. But, uh, they had the look. They had that look. They did. And they were two good-looking young guys, mm -hmm. and it's a shame what happened. One of the guys actually killed himself. I know. It's horrible. It's a horrible, suicide. It's a horrible yeah. story. Uh, anyway, Fabrice is having a birthday today, let's see, uh, 66, that would be uh, 34, 44, 48 years today. Wow. 48 years. And Danny Wood is also a singer. You may remember him. Danny Wood was uh, with kids, uh, New Kids on the Block. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Danny's having a birthday today. Step by step, you got it, I'll be loving you, and all that, all that good stuff. Danny Wood. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy and birthday. And I threw the page away, so I can't tell you how old he is. <laughs> That's okay. He's still a youngin. <laughs> yes, he is still a youngin. <laughs> New Kids on the Block, oh my goodness, I remember when they started. Do you really? When they were, well, yeah, I was a little teenager, and they started, and they, everybody loved New Kids on the Block. Yes, that they was, did. That was yeah. the big group. Maybe I wasn't a teenager. Maybe I was older than that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I remember probably them. Were. Yeah, I think I was. Maybe it was my daughter that was a teenager. <laughs> Ma maybe, probably were. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, they were a big hit for a long time. They certainly were. And of course, it was that, that particular style, again, became very yes. popular. And uh, there were offshoots from that same mm -hmm. type of several different groups uh, created. At oh, that yeah, same Backstreet time. Boys, and the list went on exactly. and on. Exactly. In sync. In sync, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that stuff. Yep. All right. Let's see, what's going on? Well, let's see here. So today is the 14th. Guess what today is? What can you go get today? Saturday. 
fresh local produce at oh, the, yeah, farmer's that's right, the farmer's market. market. That's I, all today. Oh, is that today? That is today. That's today, the farmer's market. That's right, at Herman Park. Herman Park. Open. <laughs> right? Are you my echo? Echo? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Today. Oh, I think it's time to go to our interview. Oh, it is already? I, we I just got here. I know. We got to take a break. Take a break. We've got a fellow here in the studio with us this morning whose hair is almost gray as mine. You bet. His name is Mick O'Donnell, and I've known Mick for many years. He's retired major from the U.S. Air Force. Mick, how you doing? Are doing much better. Somebody would make a law against it. I hear that, yeah. Okay, well, look, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Glad to see you again. Good to see you as well. We want to talk about a, what I would consider to be quite a serious topic here and uh, something I think is a very good topic. I, uh, it's called ROC, Retirees on Call. What in the world is that all about? Well, to understand rock, as we like to refer to it, uh, go back about six or eight months, I had a chance conversation with Wayne Chaplin about problems that existed. At the time, there was news about suicides and mm -hmm. assaults and so forth and so on. And we talked reasonably broadly about it. And he said, well, why don't you see if you come up with something? And Prior to that, I'd always been one of the group that said, you know, somebody ought to do something about that. And all of a sudden I realized that I was as good as somebody as anybody else. And as that was percolating, I kept hearing this quote that was attributed to former New York Senator Robert Kennedy. He said, some people see the world as it is and ask why but I dream of things that have never been, and that's why not, why not here, why not now, why not us. Okay, so what does all that mean? I mean, what is ROC? What, well, ROC is, is retirees on call, and basically what we're trying to do is establish a new community between the retired population here in Wayne County mm -hmm. and the kids, as I like to call them now, on base. Yeah, they're all kids. <laughs> you better believe it. I remember when. Yeah. But, well, but now, yeah, go ahead. But they're young adults. And, and, Absolutely. Uh, but they're kids to you and me. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is, uh, so what do these retirees do? These are retirees on call, kind of a go-between, you say? What does that mean? Well, uh, it means that if the people on base, on active duty, have a problem, whether it's something uh, like, you know, husband is deploying and I don't know what I'm going to do about this. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll step in if we can. We uh, will create an extended family for them. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go ahead and uh, if they need tutoring, if they're in school or their children are in school, we'll step in on short-term tutoring, not a long-term thing. Uh, if they really would like to have a good meal for dinner and but they're not motivated to spend a lot of time cooking or cleaning mm -hmm. up particularly afterwards mm -hmm. uh, we have people who will create a meal and then we'll deliver to them all right well let me ask you a question sure. now let me ask you this okay. this as i understand it mm -hmm. this is uh, simply a way to uh, as you mentioned a go between if, the, if, if there's a spouse deployed mm -hmm. then and the family's in need of help in changing the oil in the car, right? if they need someone to paint a chair, if they need someone to vacuum a floor, if they need someone to help fix a meal. Exactly. If, they, if the family needs help, then that's where retirees on call comes in. Absolutely. That's it. That's You're it. You're there to Period. help. With, uh, and we don't ask, you know, give me money. We'll do it. Uh, had uh, one parent who called the chapel because their son-in-law was deploying. Uh, their daughter had two little kids, and she also had some pretty serious medical charges. And uh, they called. The chapel referred them to me. I talked to the dad, got things calmed down. Subsequently, we got a uh, call from the mom. The fellow deployed, and the uh, young woman, had, it was on a Monday. She went to the local supermarket to pick up some odds and ends. And as she approached the checkout line, one of her two little kids whoops all over the floor. So that terminated the shopping before she could pay for the goods. And mm. mom said, can I have her call you? I said, sure. So she called. She told me what it was. And I said, okay, I'll go get it. 
And I did it with the idea in mind that if she paid me, fine. If she didn't pay me, okay, that's so fine. You, are you saying you went and got the groceries? Went and got the groceries. You went and got the groceries and helped the family out. And delivered it to them. And delivered it. Mm -hmm. That's what this is all about, is helping a family in need at Seymour Johnson. Absolutely. Or a military family. You bet. Now, interestingly enough, the original concept was the retired community helping the active duty community. Mm -hmm. But the first project we worked on, ironically, was an 87-year-old retired Air Force nurse who had gotten a wonderful Christmas present from her daughter, a brand new laptop, and she had no idea what to do with it. Really? Uh, I happened to know her, and I went out to her house, spent two days, about six hours working with her, got things all set up, talked to AT&T, got prices arranged, thought, oh, done. About three weeks later, I got a panic call from her, Mick, Mick, I don't know what to do. AT&T sent me a bill for almost $300. <laughs> I said, calm down. What did you do to this lady, Mick? <laughs> well, I mean, I'll get to that. So I went out to her house, yeah. called AT&T on the phone. And to use an old Yiddish expression, I schmoozed them. You schmoozed them. And, I understand that. Uh, yeah. The $300 bill disappeared. They compensated her for her inconvenience by giving her high-speed internet instead of regular. Mm -hmm. And then they said, oh, by the way, her promotion, under which she got the rates and everything, uh, expires on December 12th of 2014. And mm -hmm. I said, hmm, question. If she's 87 years old, would it hurt AT&T, if they made the uh, uh, expiration date of the pro uh, program 2015, he said, no, no problem, done. So, all right, uh, so I, I'm beginning to understand what ROC is, retirees mm -hmm. on call. So you're not only helping the active military mm -hmm. community, but you're also helping those military folks in need. Anybody. Retired military in and, need. Uh, the thing that I'd never thought about when first idea cropped up is the fact that the basic program has got applicability regardless of the community it's applied in. Mm -hmm. We were visiting our middle daughter up in uh, Fort Mill, South Carolina, mm -hmm. just south of Charlotte. Her next door neighbor is the marketing director for the city of Charlotte. We had a typical over the back fence conversation, told her about rock. She said, do you have anything? And I said, yeah, I do. I gave her posters that I can send you or bring you an article that was in the local paper. And, you know, I said, why? She said, sounds interesting. I'm going to show it to my boss. And if he's interested, would you come up here and brief us on how to do that? Okay. So that means that it, uh, this is such a good idea, and it certainly is, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it, there is room for it to grow into other parts of the state. Oh, yeah. Uh, your flyer here, retirees on call Seymour, those who served partnering with those still serving, and as you mentioned now, mm -hmm. it's also for uh, retired uh, military as well, 4th mm -hmm. Fighter Wing HC. Um, if you need an extended family, do you or your child need a tutor? Does a home-cooked meal sound good? Uh, do you have a honeydew need or a honey and your honey is deployed? Then uh, uh, do you need a spur-of-the-moment babysitter? you need a sanity break? A sanity, a sanity break. Everybody needs a sanity break. You better so, believe it. So if a spouse is at, uh, sitting at home at Seymour Johnson and, and he's got uh, two or three kids there, then uh, and he needs to get out for a few minutes, yep. and you can help in that regard. You bet. I, I'll never forget a uh, conversation I had with my late mother-in-law. They were in Japan, and I flew through, and I stopped over to talk to her. My father-in-law was deployed to Thailand, and she said, Oh, it's so good to have an adult conversation. Her 12-year-old daughter got furious with her. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? But, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Now, these phone numbers that I'm about to give out, are these the phone numbers to call if there's uh, Absolutely. information, somebody Absolutely. needs information, or if they just need help? All right, here's a number. Write this down. It's 919-580-0007-580-0007 or 920-4480. 920-4480. Uh, they can also contact the Base Chapel Messenger line as right. well. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, 580-0000. No, no. 580-0007. One better than I Jimmy just, Bond. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> you know that number. Yeah. Okay. 580-0007 and 920-4480. Those, those are the numbers to call. And uh, retirees on call, ROC or ROC. 
And uh, Mick, I, I think this is a great idea. I, uh, I, and I see this growing across the state and, uh, and it's probably gonna work you pretty hard here. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, it does, it does. Yep. Right? And we're planning, I'm planning right now, assuming a couple of pieces fall into place, beginning in July through the end of the year, I will go and get things rolling at the 7th, 9th Air Force Base. And if that falls in place, then beginning in the first of next year, I will hit 12th Air Force Bases and get all of their combat command. So you're it. already talking to all the, the 9th Air Force Bases? Well, I will be. You will be. All mm -hmm. right. And then, the, and then you're going on to the 12th? Yep. So this is going to be a, uh, a, a system-wide mm -hmm. uh, effort. Mm -hmm. All right. Mick O'Donnell, retired Major Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. And the program is called ROC, R-O-C, Retirees on Call. Mick, thanks for being with us today, Thanks, Wayne. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Joining me today is Letitia Banks from the Arts Council of Wayne County right here downtown Goldsboro. She's here with her always zealous self to tell us lots of events and things happening right there at the Arts Council that you can get involved in. Welcome back to the show. Well, thank you for having me again. We're always glad to have you and all this energy you bring. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> tell us, I know you guys are so excited about all these different classes that you have and the different camps. Tell us a little bit about that and where people can find additional information. Okay, well, speaking of energy, the next um, big thing that we have is Summer Art Camp. So if you're looking for some place to take your children to get rid of some of that energy, feel free to call us. Um, we are offering eight weeks of summer art camp this year. It's starting, um, the first week is starting June 2nd through June 5th. All of our art camps are Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. until 12 noon, and we have two instructors. So the age groups are from 5 to 12, and we uh, separate the groups from 5 to 8-year-olds and 9 to 12-year-olds, and they're with each instructor for 90 minutes. Um, so they will be making a couple different projects during that week, um, and it's an awesome, awesome opportunity. Um, the title of our uh, summer art camp is Excellent Adventures Exploring Your World. So. You have a lot that you can certainly do to exploit the world, so it's certainly going to be a wonderful opportunity. Um, we have several well-known instructors, um, Miss Penny Craven, Miss Beth Hill, Timothy Cavanaugh, Becca Scott Reynolds, uh, Emily Stalls. We have a couple of new um, instructors this year, uh, James Belleville um, and uh, James Daniels, um, and um, some returning instructors as well. Uh, so we are certainly excited excited to um, partake in this uh, adventure with your children and I know that they would just have a fantastic time and it's extremely affordable. It's only $85 a week. And so, how many weeks do the classes last? It is eight weeks. Now it's done on a weekly um, basis mm -hmm. so each week there is a different type of class, a different theme with oh, two instructors. Okay. So it's not building on, it's a com complete different yes. session each it's week. It's a complete week each week. Monday through Thursday you complete two projects with two instructors. So yes, and it is $85 per student per week. Uh, so that's certainly um, something that uh, is enjoyable. Um, and for those stay-at-home moms can give them a piece of time, you know, peace of mind Absolutely. for a little while. <laughs> well, tell me about where, if people want to go back and find out this mm -hmm. information a little bit later, if we don't remember it all today, mm -hmm. where do they need to go to find well, that? Well, you can either call me at 919-736-3300, and I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Or you can go to our website, www.artsinwayne.org. Perfect. So I know that's not the only thing you all have going on. There's, it's an ever-changing event calendar, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We try to keep it artsy um, you do and add job. that spark, keep that spark in downtown Goldsboro. Um, we certainly have First Friday um, each month. And I will say uh, we will actually um, eliminate First Friday for the July 4th. Um, we figured everybody would probably be out of town spending time with their families. So we will not have First Friday, July the 4th. Okay. Um, but any other month, the first Friday of each month we have first Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. that's free and open to the public you can come and view the exhibits that we currently have on display the artists have their studios open we have live music free food um, and it's just an exciting social event has become so popular so it's a great opportunity to come and meet people uh, it's amazing is 
as small as I think Goldsboro is, it seems like it's enormous um, <laughs> with the people that you meet all the time. And it's like, you live here? I never I knew. I, why don't I ever see you anywhere? But um, we just have a great time. Um, another uh, wonderful event that we have is Open Mic Night. That is the second and the fourth Thursday of each month, and it's from 7 to 9 p.m. Now, that open mic is open to anyone with artistic ability, and that's just not with painting. That's with poetry. It's with music. It's um, just anything that you've written. We've had authors that come in that have written uh, different books, novels, um, and they come in and maybe just share some things with uh, with you know the audience. So they read a little bit out of their book. They possibly? do, they do, and you know I think we try to make everyone feel at home. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that when people get up and they could be singing, and someone in the audience may be a pianist or a guitar player or um, play the drums, and they'll just get up and you and know chime right them. in, and it is just absolutely oh, wow. wonderful. A lot of people have um, will get up and you know. They they exude this fear and if I see that you're a little bit afraid I'm gonna make you get up so I think <laughs> so everybody's <laughs> become accustomed to that but you know I make you feel comfortable I'm not gonna ask you to do something that I'm not gonna do but I think it's important for you to learn how to overcome that fear um, I don't believe in fear so I'm just like you know I think anything you're fearful of that's probably something you were meant to do so um, that's you know. one way to think about it <laughs> yeah look at it that way but we just we do we have a really good time so it's really good practice if you have even any children um, that you your you know parents they may be gifted in a certain area and they need that practice of standing up in front of people that's a great opportunity right absolutely. Um, yeah a friendly environment for people that have been doing it for some time to kind of critique them and give them some positive you know, feedback as Tell to what the they can do. Tell us hours again. It's um, the second and the fourth Thursday of each month, right. and it's from 7 until 9 p.m., and it's in our main gallery downstairs. Now, do you need to pre-register to participate and be a, you know, a one who's going to be actually on the stage? You don't. When you come in, we usually have a sign-up sheet and we um, limit everyone to however many minutes, just depending on how many people are going to be, you know, involved um, in the night. So um, that's about it. So that's one that's, you know, it's just come in as you are, just like First Friday is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Summer Art Camp, we are asking that you maybe pre-register your child one to two weeks prior to the classes because we do have to account for supplies, make certain that we have everything um, ready for the instructors, um, you know, for that. Um, but I think that's the majority of things that are going at the Arts Council. Um, I would like to certainly give a thank you uh, out to all of our patrons out there that have certainly been supporting the Arts Council. Uh, Mr. Bob and Ms. Susan Crenshaw, uh, Dr. Philip Kerstetter, Ms. Mary Kerstetter, um, T.A. Loving, um, um, Wells Fargo Advisors, and I know there's countless others, and you can certainly view them in our gallery and on our website. But I just want to say thank you, and it's and it's really, really um, important um, to our community that our patrons do support the Arts Council. And one of the things that I love so much is the fact that a lot of these businesses, um, we even have a lot of the law firms here and accountants that uh, support the Arts Council continuously, uh, doctors' offices, but. Um, some of that money goes to help kids come to take these classes that could not have been afforded that opportunity before. And you gotta I love tell me that. some of those stories. You were telling me some of those off air. And I, I just did. think it's so important for them to at least hear one story. It is. I think it's important because a lot of times, you know, we have a lot of things going on in the community, a lot of negative things, and it's a great opportunity. It's a positive outlet for kids. And I love there's one young man that's involved in pretty much all of our classes, and he's afforded a scholarship, and it's because of our patrons. And he is just a passionate, artist he really is and you can see that that is something that is necessary for him um, something that will um, probably keep him on the right path and it change um, his life it really could and I want people to understand that on um, the types of kids that we have come in here I think if you have the opportunity to go and look at some of the environments that they are exposed to, you would see how this changes them mm -hmm. to be able to come and do this. So, In a protected, creative environment, if that's mm -hmm. a gift they've been given, right. for them to be able to take this opportunity with teachers who can really train them and move them forward, there's no right. telling what kind that's of doors right. can be open for that's them in exactly the future. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And in the long run, I'll, as I've always said, it saves the city some money, I'm sure, because you know, a lot of times kids that don't have anything to do, they end up doing things they should not. Right. So. And, and we're all about promoting our children to grow up to be productive, 
That's right. Citizens of whatever community they right. live in. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So again, I just want to say thank you to all of the uh, supporters of the Arts Council of Wayne County, and we certainly just we just thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and we look forward to seeing you at our events, and um, just look forward to your continued support. And you know, that, that says it all right there, that wraps it up. She has given you a long list of events and things happening at the Arts Council. Artsinwayne.org is the website. You can visit that to find out additional details and other events that will be happening throughout the spring and summer. Thanks for being with us, and this is WGTV Today. And we're back. Yes, we are. See, I told you the thing about the Mick O'Donnell and his uh, uh, program Retirees. out of Seymour Johnson. Mm -hmm. That's a great program. And congratulations to Mick on that and all the folks out of Seymour Johnson. And you were also correct about Letitia being full of energy and very passionate about great? the Arts Council. She is great. She is great. All right, now coming up, uh, let's see, is this uh, today's the 14th? Today at 10 o'clock this morning, Jimmy Nelson. Yes. That's not the Jimmy Nelson I remember. No, I don't believe it is. No. Uh, Jimmy Nelson will be sharing his military aviation scrapbook collection at, the, uh, at Peggy Seeger Senior Center on East Ash Street. This includes over 20 books covering the 1940s and 1950s. Each book contains a certain period. Each book contains a period such as World War II. Another book will cover Korea. Another book will cover Vietnam. He'll have over 20 books to look at. Uh, uh, also, uh, a specific branch of the military, Air Force, Navy, or Marines. Uh, come in, pick out what you like most. All airplanes are in a timeline in order of order of each era. Anyway, it's going to be a very interesting display. It's set up at the Peggy Seeger Senior Center today from 10 o'clock this morning until 11:30 this after uh, this morning. Also, yeah, still this 11 morning. <laughs> still this morning. So, if you're watching the program, the noon program. It's too late for that. Don't go. Already happened. It's done over. It certainly is. That's yes, exactly right. And I laugh because the Jimmy Nelson I know was an actor on television who had the, he was a ventriloquist who had the dog Farfel. And Farfel was the, the character that sang the Nestle's song. Really? Chocolate. Yes. Nestle's uh -huh. makes the very best <laughs> chocolate. Okay, that was Farfel. Anyway, that's Jimmy Nelson. Pretty cute. Go ahead. Your Just turn. so you know, uh, May 24th is going to be the opening day for our outdoor pools here in the city of Goldsboro. Oh, We've got both Mina Wheel Pool and Peacock Park, I mean Peacock Parks Pool. <laughs> Couldn't get it out. <laughs> All opening May 24th. If you want to find out more information about the hours and any other details, you can visit the city of Goldsboro, Goldsboro's website, goldsboronc.gov. Quit laughing. <laughs> this is one of those days. I know. One of those days. I know, I love it. And tomorrow, Center Street Jam. Oh boy. That, we've waited a long time for that. Oh, we have. Waited almost a long time. Almost a year. That's last right. May was the last time. Well, no, I take that back. I guess it was, they ran through August. October, August. August. <laughs> we've waited since August. Hey, pick a month. There's only 12. That's right. That's right. Spare Change is the band. Come out and join us. It's a family friendly environment from 6 to 9, John Street parking lot. Come have a good afternoon. There you go, and have a good time, and I know That's you will. That's right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Social Security, a very interesting topic. Yes, it is. Ethel Barnes, the public affairs specialist for the Social Security Administration, will be holding office hours at the Senior Center. Oh, you're actually having to pull away a little bit. You can't see the font. Well, I just saw, and I realized this was a couple of days ago, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was great. <laughs> we missed it. Okay. Here's another. Yes. Yes, East Point Geriatric Adult Mental Health Specialty Team is offering caregiver classes at the Senior Center. The classes are every fourth Monday of each month at 5.30 p.m. Now, uh, May's class will be this coming Monday, the third Monday, but usually it's the fourth Monday of each month. This uh, coming Monday at 5.30 p.m. at the Senior Center. This is the East Point Geriatric Adult Mental Health Specialty Team Caregiver Class. At wow. The Senior Center. I know. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. It's it a mouthful. certainly is. Call the Senior Center if you have any questions about that. 
I believe we are done for the day. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We are done. Stick a fork in it. There you go. <laughs> Have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time. Until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.